You know what I like about home theater? The more that you learn and the more that you work on it, uh, the bigger reward that you get. Hey guys and welcome back to another Random Distractions home theater update and this one's going to be just a little bit long because I am going to go through the entire process uh, that I went through uh, with the Anthem uh, recently and ARC. Um, but first I wanted to thank uh, a couple of people. Uh, I recently joined the Anthem Audio Lovers Facebook group, uh, which if you're an Anthem user, uh, I would definitely recommend uh, seeking out that group and joining it. Uh, there's always a bunch of friendly people there that are helping out, uh, people that have questions and things like that, and then just in general uh, sharing <laughs> their uh, love for the uh, Anthem products. Um, and sometimes the, the things that they don't love about the Anthem products, uh, like the remote <laughs> for one. But I wanted to thank Corey. Uh, he had reached out to me at, when I had posted a short post on my setup and you know asked for any suggestions and comments. And uh, he mentioned that he's actually um, a distributor and you know has done thousands of calibrations and stuff. So he knew what he was talking about. And so he gave me a couple of suggestions. Uh, there was also another gentleman in there by the name of Eve, I believe and he has a, uh, a short document that kind of talks about you know uh, where to put the mics and you know and if you're having trouble especially with the newest line um, uh, we had the issue of it was boosting the levels for each of the speakers really high and um, and so that was something that was uh, kind of you know concerning for a lot of people and so he came up with a way uh, to go around that so that's part of what I'm going to go through uh, as well and then uh, somebody on one of my videos uh, Nightwave uh, commented and uh, linked to a, a article on audioadvice.com that also talked about the uh, Anthem setup guide and I'll go ahead and leave that link uh, there in the description as well and so with all that uh, said, uh, again, thanks to, to those guys uh, for their suggestions. I also watched a bunch of other videos as well to kind of like, you know, get a good idea and to rerun uh, ARC. Because I think when I ran it the first time, you know, I was just kind of <laughs> go guessing at it and it was pretty straightforward but um, and I thought I was doing it right but there are some things that uh, are suggested uh, but basically uh, before I go into it uh, I'll give a quick summary of what happened so the first thing I did was follow Eve's uh, PDF uh, which talked about how to raise the level of the volume in order to you know reach that 75 db on your speakers and not have anthem you know lower or, or not a lower but increase the levels for each of your speakers um, so that's what i did first and then after i was able to figure that out i went ahead and ran the calibration and um, you know made sure that the positions were in the right spot uh, thanks to Corey suggesting you know how to place the microphones and I'll go over that in the video as well and then afterwards uh, just double checking and making sure that everything was still at the right level uh, which you know for home theater they usually suggest 75 dB um, so I'll go over that now I'm gonna go ahead and go to the computer and show you uh, what uh, that process looked like Okay, so before going to the computer, I thought I should check if there were any updates for the receiver. I went into the system info to see what current versions of the systems on the receiver were, and I also show that I had ARC applied from when I ran it previously. There was an update, and as you can see in the video, there was a glitch on the screen where it showed the menu, but it was actually still loading. But then it corrected itself and took about six minutes to complete. However, after looking at the system info again, there was only updates to the firmware, MCU, and LCD systems. Everything else was the same, including the previous ARC file. So now what I needed to do was to remove that ARC file by going into the ARC software and selecting Remove ARC Settings from a Device. I then went back to the receiver and confirmed that the ARC file was removed. So now I was ready to use Eve's method of first finding out what volume my lowest speaker needed in order to be around 75 dB. Anthem currently uses negative 37.5 on the volume when running ARC or using the quick measure tool. I first checked all the levels of each speaker to see which one was the lowest. For me, this was my height left speaker, which was measuring around 66 dB. 
Switching back to that one, I then use my phone to access the browser GUI of Anthem and raise the volume till it reached around 75 dB. For me, this ended up being negative 29. At this point, I also needed to level match my subs to 71 dB, and I had reset through the SVS app the EQ settings, so needed to redo those as well. I thought I recorded going through that on my phone, but it didn't, so I just have the final results. However, you can see as I was making the changes, the measure tool was hearing those changes, and I could see it in the measurement. My goal was to reduce the peaks and boost only a little. Here's where I ended up for sub 1, which it, I then adjusted the gain to bring it down to 71 dB. I did the same for sub 2, trying to lower the peaks and boost only a little. Here's where I ended up for sub 2, and again adjusted the gain to bring it down to 71 dB. Here you can see what sub 1 is before EQ, and then after EQ. Same for sub 2, this is before EQ, and this is after EQ. Like I said, I tried to lower the peaks mostly. Now that I knew where my volume needed to be and my subs were dialed in, I started up the arc measuring tool. The cool thing about arc is that it allows you to do up to four separate measurements using different configurations. I wanted to try some different settings so I decided I would do three separate measurements. One with all the speakers or a 5.2.2 setup. The second, a 4.2.2 setup to see how my speakers would do in creating a phantom center channel. And the third one was a 2.2 for stereo music listening. As you can see, I mislabeled in the beginning, so I had to go back to edit the profile names. The one thing to remember about the separate measurements is to turn off the correct speakers for each of the different measurements. So for my 4.2.2, I turned off the center channel. And for the 2.2, I turned off the center, surrounds, and heights. I was now ready to start measuring. As soon as the first position started, I paused and used my phone to check the volume. It was at negative 37 and a half, so raised it to negative 29. I then resumed. Here you can see where I have the microphone located for position one at ear level. Here's position 2, which is 3 feet away from position 1, and between 6 to 12 inches below ear level. I also paused to check the volume and it was still at negative 29. Here's position 3, which is 3 feet away from position 1, and between 6 to 12 inches above ear level. Here's position 4, which is behind where position 2 was, but between 6 to 12 inches above ear level. Here's position 5, which is behind where position 3 was, but between 6 to 12 inches below ear level. These mic position suggestions were from Corey on the Anthem Audio Lovers Facebook group, and they are also in the instructions from Eve's Guide. The one thing I notice is that the volume only reset itself when you went from one measurement profile to another. Once you set it for the first microphone position, the rest were okay for that profile. So I did have to raise the volume when it switched to the different profiles, but not after the first mic position.
It was finally done measuring, so I reviewed the changes. Anthem does a good job of adjusting the EQ for the speakers to reach the target curves. As you can see, the speaker levels were showing negative numbers mostly, which was very different from when I ran it the previous time. I'm also showing the settings for each of the channels for Profile 1. Front speakers, the center, surrounds, height channel, sub 1, and sub 2. Profile 2 and Profile 3 had the same settings. I then went ahead and uploaded the corrections to the Anthem. I went back into System Info and confirmed that ARC was applied. It was now time to double check the levels of each of the speakers, so I launched the Quick Measure tool. This time, it now has a Use ARC Corrections toggle, which I made sure to turn on, and I increased my volume once again to negative 29. I then went through each channel and made sure that they were at 75 dB. I adjusted the speaker levels using my phone. They were a little off, but it didn't take long to adjust. For the subwoofer, since I had two of them, I put them at 71 dB per the suggestions from Corey so that they would equal to 75 dB together. I then went back to the ARC file and applied some other suggestions from Corey. The first was to raise the room game up 0.5 to 1 dB higher for more impact and tighter response from the subs, so I went from 2 to 3 dB. He also suggested dropping the high frequency extension to between 120 to 130 so that they would gel better. I also changed the slope to flat as I remember seeing this in an Audioholics video and made sense to allow as much low frequencies through. And here are the final levels for each of the channels. Sub 1, Sub 2, Front Left, Front Right, Center, Surround Left, Surround Right, Dolby Left, Dolby Right. In this graph, you can see my previous settings compared to what I got this time and the difference. Using the technique of adjusting the volume really seemed to help bring the levels down, and as you can see, since I did use the Dolby Left as the reference, it's at 0 dB. Another cool trick that the Anthem has is to create virtual inputs using whatever video and audio inputs that you want, and specifying the speaker profiles to use. So I created one for the 5.2.2 speaker profile using HDMI 1 for the video and audio, but speaker profile 1. I created another one for the 4.2.2 speaker profile using HDMI 1 for the video and audio, but speaker profile 2. And finally, one for the 2.2 speaker profile using HDMI 1 for the video and audio, but speaker profile 3. I also specified that I wanted to use Dolby Surround for multi-channel sources, and chose the post-processing to use for each of them, which was music for the 2.2, and movie for the other ones.
So that's uh, the entire process. If you hung out this long, I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully that provided some insight or maybe some different things that you want, would want to try. Um, like I said, it really made a difference as far as the levels go. I mean, now there's a lot of negative uh, levels uh, on there. Uh, the one thing that I will say is that now I do have to turn it up even more, uh, whereas before, you know, I think uh, negative 25 was the loudest that I would be, uh, that I would go, and now negative 10 is probably the loudest that I would go. Um, uh, although, you know, with uh, music, it's definitely, you know, uh, usually negative 15 or somewhere around there. Uh, but it definitely sounds great. Uh, everything seems to be really well balanced. And I know that uh, some people believe or and don't believe in regards to break-in for speakers, uh, but I think that there's also maybe a, a little bit of a break-in period for your ears uh, with things like this, uh, because um, you know when you first hear it, it it's like oh you know I wish I would, there would be a little bit more of this or, or a little bit more of that, uh, but as you're watching you know different content and especially if you're uh, going through different streaming services, uh, even like different um, videos within those streaming services, they sound different um, c compared to like say physical media, uh, and even those uh, sometimes they sound different. Uh, uh, for example, The Revenant, I watched that, and that one I needed to go up to negative 10 to feel about right, uh, whereas Pacific Rim, I only needed to go up to like negative 15. I think Kong Island was also just negative 10, I think, on that one. So um, it changes a little bit, but uh, the more that I listened to stuff, the more that I was getting accustomed to it and like really liking the way that it sounded. Um, so who knows, maybe I'll still continue to do different things, uh, especially if I hear any suggestions from you guys or any uh, additional comments of things to try. So that's all I have really. Uh, thank you for again for watching the video and uh, like I said, if you have any additional comments or suggestions or things that I can try, that's one of the things that I, I mentioned like in the beginning is the more you learn about it and the more that you work on it, uh, the uh, bigger reward that you receive uh, from from doing it. So I uh, definitely appreciate any uh, suggestions and comments that you guys have. Would definitely appreciate a like, of course, on this video. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when another one drops. And until then, I hope you have a good one.